Hey, you! I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. So we're bringing out the laws. That's our job. Because that's what the Bible says that we must do. We must bring out the laws. The brother just brought out a law to you already about Hebrews 13 to 4. And Exodus, uh, what was it, 22 and 16. About uh, if, if you want to talk to a man, man want to talk to you, right? Y'all interested in each other. Now y'all want to take it to the next step. You must be married. Simple as that. Control yourself. You got to be married. Let me get another law. Deuteronomy 22. We're going to give you another law. Right now, what we're doing is going through the process of repentance. All right, sis? We're going through the process of repentance. You keeping the law right now, you don't even know it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What pertains to a man that a woman should not wear, according to the laws of God? Pants. You already know. You already know, sis. So from here on out, what you plan on doing about that? Huh? Plan on wearing dresses. You plan on wearing dresses. I have dresses. I just had to build some uh, videography and stuff that I had to do. But don't. But look, hold this. Give me uh, collages two and eight. No, is it collages two and eight? I want. Huh? Yes. Yes. Give me that. Yep. So you, you like you said. You said well. It's, it's a matter of something that I had to do for something that they ain't got nothing to do with this Bible. Pretty much, right? I, I wore them pants because of uh, whatever this, that, and the third reason. Right? Now, if Christ came and visited you right now, is that what you're going to tell him? God knows my heart. He knows what I do. And he knows some things are But what we talking about right now, though, we talking about getting the kingdom of heaven. We talking about something so much more bigger, right? You know that to be true, right? You know that to be true. We talking about getting the kingdom of heaven. We talking about Christ coming back, taking you out of the conditions that our people are in, that you suffer from yourself. We, we all do. Let me ask you, what's your nationality? I am an Israelite. You are an Israelite. Did you know that before today? How long you knew that for? I've known it for a couple of years. For, for a couple of years? What about before those couple of years? I thought about it. I thought you thought about it. it. But were you sure? Did you did you grow up knowing and understanding the laws of God? I grew up knowing God himself and I grew up knowing that I was connected to him in some great way I just didn't know and then a few years ago God showed me um, Actually started with my DNA mm -hmm. and then it went on from there uh, The revealing in 2019 when they had 1619 project God started to reveal it to me. What's your age? I'm 47. 47 but all your life, you didn't understand that you was an Israelite. Let's say somebody taught you. Let's, uh, let's say somebody taught you. Let's say somebody taught you that you was an Israelite. You didn't have the complete understanding of what it meant to be an Israelite, sis. Is that right? Therefore, you are cursed just like the rest of us. You Look, listen to me. Listen, listen to the, what the scripture is saying. We're going to get it in a second. But the scripture is trying to is, is trying to expound to our people. The reason why we are out here is because our people don't know, nor do they consider who in the world they are. If we did, we'll be adherent to the things of this Bible. If we did, if you did, right? You would understand that Christ will be back already, but our people don't know. A lot of people don't. And I'm letting you know that you didn't either. I did. Okay, we're going to find out. We're going to find out. We're going to finish this. Watch this. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Uh -huh. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit. Uh -huh. The Bible says, beware, lest any man, not just the pastor, right? Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. My question to you was, why do you got pants on? Why do you have pants on? The job I had to do. For the job that you got to do. Okay. I okay. I was on my way home and I said, let me stop by. So you normally wear dresses? I wear dresses, but if I have to wear pants. On occasion? Yeah, I don't wear. Go on where? To the store? I mean, when I'm working my job. So That's the only time you wear pants? For the most part. I mean, if I do go to the store, I have to put on some pants. All right. But Finish this up. After the tradition of men, uh -huh. after the rudiments of the world, 
and not after Christ. And not after who? After Christ. Are you following Christ by doing that? So, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, Let's stay, hold on, hold on. Let's stay right there. Let's stay right there. Are you following? All right. But let's let's stay at that point right there. Are you following Christ by keeping pants on? What I'm saying to you is, if I am required to wear pants for my job, that's what I'm going to do. Because of the fact that's the job that God has blessed me with. Okay. Okay. But other than that, I respect the fact of wearing a dress, and I have been wanting so, to buy more dresses. So I, I understand that, sis. Now, what is what does the Lord require of you? Because you said you knew that you was an Israelite. Yeah, I do know I'm an Israelite. Right. I'm you an Israelite understand. by blood. Yes. All right. What is that? Twelve and ten. Ten to twelve. Twelve and ten. Ten. What kind of work do? This is the book of Deuteronomy. What kind of? Well, shipyard and so forth. So it's several things that I do. Understood. And then I'm a mother. <laughs> Chapter ten, verse twelve. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways. Some of his ways. All his ways. Maybe it depends on the job situation. All his ways. Uh -huh. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and, the, and his statutes, which uh -huh. I command thee this day for thy good. For thy what? For thy good. So understand, when we're bringing this out, it's not because we hate you. It's because this is what love is according to the Bible, sis. We're telling you, we don't want God to slay you, put you to death. Right? You said you got a relationship with God. What does it mean to love God? To follow God, Bob. What, it, what, it, what does that look like? I obey God. Obedience. Yeah. So what what's we do, though? What what kind of things right now could you say that, all right, what, what kind of law did we just give you? You gave me all kinds of Specifically, we're talking about pants, right? You're talking about a lot of stuff. Right. And those are things that, of course, they're required in Scripture. Uh -huh. And they're required for a lot of different things. Right. However, when a person is getting a closer walk to God and they're learning new things, there's still stuff y'all have yet to understand. And this is true. It's an everyday walk. This is a walk, right. So, if your heart is not right with God, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. And it doesn't matter, even me being an Israelite, mm -hmm. if my heart isn't right with God, I have to, one, receive a son. And number two, mm -hmm. I have to take time with him, spend time with him, worship him. A lot of people don't have the Holy Spirit. A lot of okay. people don't move in the Spirit. And do you know, what's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is my God and my leader. All right, we're gonna show you. We're gonna show. We're gonna show you right now today what the Holy Spirit is, okay? Because there's a little bit of Christianity that you got into, into, interwoven into, to that, to a little bit of that. Relationship, and I, and I had that before I even entered into anybody's church. Okay. I'm no longer in anybody's ministry. All right, we're gonna see. Okay. Get that real quick. First John, First John two. So what we trying to do? Because you said you, you, you know that you're an Israelite, right? And what's required of you according to the scripture? To keep the what? To keep his commandments. To keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Because it's not enough to know that you're an Israelite. Did we not know that we were Israelites when we came out of Egypt? I'm not saying it's enough to know it's Israelite. You, it doesn't right. matter if you're an Israelite or not. What matters is that your heart is right with God. It doesn't matter if you're an Israelite? No, it doesn't Who did he give the laws to? Who did he, he give the he laws to? to the he gave it to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stick with the Israelites. Because that's what the Bible say. The Bible say the that the script, the, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. And hereby we do know that we know him. How do we know that we know him, right? If we keep his commandments. If we what? Keep his commandment. This is the very important thing. That's the key thing right there, sis. We know that we understand. We know that we uh, know God if we keep his commandments. It's as simple as that. There's no other way to know the Lord except you be keeping his commandments. That's the difference between us and the other nations. The other nations, go to Deuteronomy 4 and 6. The other nations have no clue of how to love God. You have access to the Lord by doing what? Keeping his what? And keeping his commandments. Hold on, hold on real quick. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Because there's a difference between you and a so-called white woman. Or so-called East Indian woman. 
There's differences. Hold on, hold on, hold that point. Keep therefore and do them. And do and do them. Uh -huh. But this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. Why would it say that? Why would it put a distinction between you and the other nations? I know there's a difference. All right, so all praises. So you must understand that God has set us differently from the other nations, set us above the other nations. Therefore, he requires something from you. And that requirement, a part of that requirement is that a sister will wear not pants. They will, that she will wear a modest dress. I'm wearing pants right now. What else you got? Okay, all praises. <laughs> all praises. All praises. Which shall hear all these statutes uh -huh. and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. That's how they're supposed to view us. Now give me numbers 15. You said, what else we got? All right, all praises. We're going to break down some laws for you. Because we want our sister to repent. All right. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. So now we're going to talk about what you must put on those dresses. Do you know? Yeah, what, what, what should go at the bottom of those dresses? I don't know. Those things right there? Those things right there. <laughs> those things right there. You, you see, now this is, this is how you're learning more about your father. Uh, this is how you're learning more about your nation and your heritage. All right? This is that process of repentance we was talking about, okay? The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Who did it say that it was for? Israel, right? Throughout their generation. Uh -huh. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. You see that? So these can be different colors, right? These fringes here. But this ribbon got to be blue. So all your modest dresses, I'm assuming that you have at the home, right? All your modest skirts that you got back at the house must have fringes on them. Every last one of them got to have fringes on them. That's how I know oh, she's an Israelite. That's a, that's a Hebrew woman right there. She's righteous. You see? So she's righteous, she's righteous wearing that. This isn't the only thing. Oh, I'm, I'm right? That's not the only thing. That's that, not what we're saying. You, wait, but let me ask you this. Go ahead, go ahead. So I'm listening. If I came out here with fringes with blue on the top of it. We can tell that you're an Israelite. But you automatically think that I'm righteous. I can't say that. Oh, okay. I just wanted to. I just wanted But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing it. I'm just wondering. Right? I'm just wondering. Okay, all right. Was that the language that you were And it shall be unto you for a fringe uh -huh. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So what's the point of us having fringes? I don't know, tell me. It just told you, read it again. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and, and do them. And do them. So what's the purpose of the fringe? Because you just said, well, just because a person got fringes on, that doesn't mean no, that they righteous, you, right? I'm asking you, if you saw somebody right. with fringes in a blue ribbon... It doesn't necessarily mean that they okay. are righteous. I wouldn't okay. automatically assume that. Okay. But what I should be able to assume is, according to the scripture, that they would know it. Right? The, not just that, though. The, this commandment is for the Israelites, but the purpose of the fringes is to do what? Is to show... Read that part again. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. So when you look at these fringes, when I see somebody walking up the street, they could be evil and wicked as hell. But assuming that they've read this scripture, they should be doing what? That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And th that they will remember the commandments of the Lord. Okay, all right. And do them. And what? And do them. And not be just about talk, about keeping the commandments. So this is just a, a symbol that, yes, that person keep the commandments. He doesn't celebrate birthdays. That person don't celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving. All right? That's what that means. It means that they're keeping the things that Christ did. Passover, tabernacles, right? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. 
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.